And now engaging also in policy dialogues, starting to think about how to change the mental health landscape in Kenya uh, and in East Africa. Um, beginning with our engagement has been around suicide and suicide prevention. Um, and we are huge advocates for decriminalization of suicide attempts so that people who have suicidal ideation or suicide thoughts can seek help and get help rather than being stigmatized and uh, treated like outcasts. So over the past five years or so, um, this advocacy rose to the level of influencing the presidency to declare that uh, we have a crisis in mental health in this country. And so in 2019, towards the end of 2019, the government formed a task force on mental health in Kenya. Um, and I was privileged to sit on that task force. And within three months, we had uh, gone around the country, collected views, collected opinions, and, and uh, looked at the state of mental health in the country. And we produced a report that uh, was received by the Ministry of Health and by the Office of the President in 2020, uh, July. And the government committed to implementing the recommendations in that report. Most significant findings from this work is that among the participants, and of a huge proportion of the women who participated indicated that they had, they had lost somebody to suicide, while a smaller proportion of men indicated that they have lost somebody to suicide. To my mind, this highlights the caregiving role that our society has assigned women. And so they take care of uh, people with uh, you know, mental health problems, self-harm, and so on. The second thing that uh, we picked from uh, this study was the fact that more men now are admitting to having suicidal ideas compared to women. And this completely flipped the script because in the past, we have always held that uh, women experience a lot more suicidal ideation than men. But in this particular study, 